Oh, I'm surprised I didn't go for that. Okay, there we go. He's kind of just congested himself in there, really. But that's okay. Let's grab here. Go for this. And another knight move, just dancing all over the place. Let's just attack the bishop, see what's actually happening. Let's take it all the way back here. Yep. Let's just touch onto the knight, see what's happening. I've jammed in my own knight, just bear that in mind. So you can expect this at some point. And yep, so he's going to be jamming my knight in. So let's take. Huh? So I think we've got time to move then. And let's just get the knight across. Should we sit it in the centre? He's going to want to move this knight to push this pawn onto the knight. Yep, like we said, so I'm actually going to push on <clears throat> so we know the pawn's coming down for the night. Okay, if the pawn did drop, obviously the knight was going to jump here, so I think they've realised that now. So, are we going to take, or are we going to push? This pawn doesn't have any protection, so I'm actually going to bring the bishop here, just in case we think we're fashioning this type of stuff. Ooh, interesting times. Shall we get the queen here? Obviously, it can't do much because he's just going to drop there, but, you know, it's just to show that lay where in the game. Give you something to think about. This, this is not meaty at all in any way, shape. There is, if if we were allowed to, which we're never going to be allowed to. Yeah, it just drops there, so... Because that would have been nice if this was already up. Then we'd just take here with the support from the bishop. So, we've gone for dishevelment. Is the knight doing anything fantastic here? Knight takes, pawn takes... Nah, let's just move it. Let's go here. Don't want to lose on time, just keep everything hunky dory. So, around the king area, yet again. But as we've said, there's nothing meaty per se, it's just now, yes, so it's got to attack. But now we can't do any of that business. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Knight can jump here with a kind of mate threat, but he's just going to drop there. So then we've got space to move back. Or, oh. yeah, okay. Well, the pawn can't actually take the knight though. So we could push this pawn, but then is that giving us anything? So we can't take the knight. Do you know, I'm going to explode in the center. I'm losing a pawn. I'm going to be down a pawn. I appreciate that. I'm going to have to move the knight. But I'm going to be down a pawn, but I'm trying to upset the structure around his king, if I can. He who dares wins in a kind of weird way. Does capture, let's just capture as we said, so his pawn's gonna be on, the rook will be up if he does take. Then pressure in this pawn here with the queen and the rook. So he doesn't have to take, can probably push down. But then if he does, then the queen takes the pawn with a check on the king. So maybe one of the pieces is going to come into play the knight or something. So he's moved out of the way. So now he can take our um, knight. Bishop can come here attacking their rook, but then his rook just drops here. Then the pawn can take. It's on the rook. 
let's try that see if the rook moves then we go here then he has to move out of the way but he can't go there he can't go there well this feels like chess harassment but he can always just take our knight as well so and he's on our queen so he does actually do that is there something different that I can do? I think just taking. Now we're facing the king. Just gotta watch the time now. So there seems like a lot of pressure we're putting on. I mean, queen, the pawn can no longer take this pawn. The rook comes here. We take. The rook comes to defend and that's checkmate. Oh, nice touch. Didn't even see that one, did I? I'm going to have to push on to the pawn. No, so I'm not rushing to take the rook because... Ooh. Oh, maybe we messed it up now. Let's take... Anyway. It's letting the white square bishop in, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Damn it. Letting the white square bishop in. Can't take. Oh, my time's gonna run out here now. So he can come and actually attack. If we move the queen here and get it to here. Move the queen. Trying to replicate that position that we have, but as he can have, he can just come here with his bishop, can't he? Damn! Thought we had it. We're trying to squish him as best possible. We are squishing their time, which is a good thing. So time again. Ooh, oh, the knight's defending the area. Oh, boulder dash. The knight's defending the area. I have to go for it anyway, but... Damn it. So if we... Okay, let's ignore taking for now and push on. He's got three pieces on there. I, I can't survive that. Uh, nope. Takes, rook takes. Queen check. Uh, do we double up? I don't think we've got time to do any of this. I don't think we've got time to do any of this and the squish looks like it's gone. Okay, so it's time. We're going to try and beat them up. Ooh. What's he going for? Just double and see what happens. Oh, the rooks. What? But he's blocked the bishop. And... Ooh, we could do that. Let's block the bishop. Uh, 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 uh. There must be something. Come on, ten seconds. You know he's got to move. He's going to take the pawn because he's... Oh, eh? oh they've resigned. Yes! <laughs> oh, dear me. Okay, I'm going to dare look at the analysis now because when you see those squishy type things it doesn't mean you're actually winning uh, but, but, but look at that look plus three <laughs> it's plus three for white oh my god king h2 it's saying Obviously the opponent didn't see it. When you're getting squished like that, you cannot see anything because of the fog. But this is a beautiful, typical example of what I'm talking about with the squish, the attacking the king area, attacking the areas around the king. Um, and this, <clears throat> this is showing that we're losing. You know, that white is actually winning in this position. Does it look like white is winning in this position? You know, genuinely, if you were in this position, would you think you were winning as white? 
I know I wouldn't be thinking I was winning as white. So that's the sort of the illusion that the answer can bring in. And that's what you see, especially in like maybe even the higher level, in all games of chess, no matter what, it's not about a levels thing. Um, if somebody then ends up swindling, I've done a recent mini type series on the swindling aspect um, where one player actually said, you lose, you know, in the in the chat thing. I'm like going, oh, I don't know, do I? Um, and it was for them to prove the win, you know? I mean, what did they have? They had a rook, two rooks or something, and then they promoted to a queen. Um, so they, there's no way made, they should have lost. And I had, what is it, two pawns, a rook and a king or something like that. They, they were highly elevated up the board. But if they had played the moves correctly, we would have lost. But based on the way that they had played the game, I thought, well, I might just chance my arm here and see, see if they know how to end the game. And yes, yeah, swindling is, a, is one of the key things in chess. I mean, there's all sorts of tactics that are psychological that you can utilise in chess. Some are frowned upon by purists because, you know, they don't like the aspect of losing in those manners. But if, if, they, if it's there on a plate for you, it's not that you're doing anything special. It's just that the opponent doesn't know how to close out the game. Especially like if you're losing on time, the opponent hasn't closed the game out. They may have, might have more pieces on the ball, but they haven't closed the game out in the time factor. Same with like swindling, um, they haven't closed the game out with the position or pieces that they've got, so they don't know how to do that. So it's not illegal to take advantage of that if they don't know how to do certain things. It's all part of the game. So frowning on ways that people win games really should kind of be knocked on the head because at the end of the day, they're all part of within the rules of chess you know you're not adding extra pieces or you're not moving pieces illegally on the board fingers crossed you're not um so the whole idea behind the game is by any means necessary if you want to gain advantage in your chess play if the person puts their hand on a piece and within the rules of the game um you have to then move that piece then you shouldn't be chastised. You know, I know full well that's happened to me a few times where I've touched a piece and they've gone, well, you have to move it. So I've, I have to move it, you know, and I've not hated on that person because they've said, oh, you know, you've touched it. Um, so you have to move it, yeah? Um, but I know, think before you put your hand on your piece. There are no rules in terms of you doing whatever you have to do in order to gain advantage whether that's through swindling which is basically pretending that you've got a good type of situation going on but the opponent doesn't know how to close it out whether it's via time where the opponent's um, got a, maybe a good valid position but they're having to think long and hard about it so they're actually losing the time or they're scrabbling around and you're, you're going real fast both of you but they're just not fast enough moving their pieces so there's a whole remit of things, you know, um, if they do something illegal, then they have to be held accountable for it. So at the end of the day, those are ways of gaining advantages within chess, but they should not be frowned upon and in what's the word now, classed as not, not valid wins or anything like that. A win is a win or an advantage or a draw is a draw. Um, if you stalemate as well, um, that's another key thing. Stalemate, especially when the opponent's got more pieces than yourself, um, that's frowned upon. You know, it's like, oh, I can't believe, you know, and it's like, like you've done something illegal. 